Rona looks down at her new ID. It's a beautiful thing, more like a piece of jewellery than the old rectangular piece of plastic she used to carry around her neck. This one makes her feel proud. To have changed industries, to have learnt new skills in her 60s, to have started a new job. She carefully investigates the embossed letters on her ID as if to check they are real. They spell her name and her new title. Rewilding Warden, 3rd Division of the Scottish Restoration Corps. Such a fancy sounding title. In many ways, it'd been an easy transition for her. Her previous job in oil and gas kept her outdoors for most of the past decades. But the jobs dried up and so did people's enthusiasm for the fossil fuel industry. Before she'd lost her job in one of the last rounds of cuts, she was starting to feel uneasy about how her family talked about her job. Just a few years ago, her teenage niece teased her about still working in a dirty industry. What do these kids know about hard work when they moralise us about carbon? In the background, a radio jingle advertises the retraining programme she'd been on, Plant for Climate. She recognises the voice of the Prime Minister as they compare the huge rewilding efforts to the home front during the old wars of the 20th century. Dig for victory, plant for climate, we're in it together, your country needs you. She boils the kettle and thinks how much things have changed. Fisheries were struggling with lower catches, decommissioning the oil and gas sector became a financial burden once fossil fuel demand dried up and prices went below zero. And the floods, gosh the floods kept hitting us over and over as the rains became one long winter season. In many places around the world it suddenly became impossible to ensure anything and the financial system once again stood at the precipice. That's when the government finally intervened. At the beginning, it felt a bit like mobilisation we'd seen during the first Covid lockdown of 2020. The whole country rallied. We thought the rationing would be temporary and we were hopeful that other sectors would grow rapidly. Culture, education, green industries. There's less now, but in some ways there's more. We once again value frugality and getting on with it. None of the frivolous nonsense that Rona always thought was a bit much. Flying abroad, buying new frocks all the time, eating meat with every meal. Moderation is now valued and rewarded. A flight a year, a serving of meat per month, 15 hours access to a car share a month. There's a black market for trading these rations, but Rona finds this against the purpose. We're in this together, right? Not everyone has welcomed the change. She's met some people on the retraining scheme who have had a tough decade since the start of the pandemic. They've been moved from the old retail sector and they're not used to this kind of work out in the elements. It doesn't sound like they've had much choice in the matter either. Still better than sitting around unemployed like the old days. Young people like her niece seem to just get it. At least they didn't spend all those years striking and marching for climate action for nothing. They understood the need to change long before all the adults. But Rona can't help feel for them sometimes. They are not responsible for getting us into this mess and yet they get the same rations as the rest of us. But that doesn't seem to matter. They are inspired with a sense of purpose and are rising to the challenge. Now they're becoming adults in their own right, they're going to have to figure out not just how we reach net zero, but how we maintain it.